Coming up on Goffstown This Week, we'll talk with Crispin's House about their organization and their 3-on-3 basketball tournament coming up. We'll highlight the new town administrator announcement and debut our new segment, Seniors Count, with Brad Parkhurst. It's all ahead on Goffstown This Week. Welcome to Goffstown This Week. I'm Adam McKeon, the coordinator here for Goffstown TV and your host. And with me now is Diane McCarthy from Crispin's House. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, happy to have you. And I guess we're going to be talking some hoop action here yes, in March Yes, we are. So three on three tournament, talk about what's going on with this. So on March 25th, Crispin's House is holding their 17th annual 17th, wow. charitable basketball tournament, three on three. Uh, we have categories starting at grades three and then 19 and up, 30 and up, and even 50 and up. So wow. we ask any and all players, all abilities are welcome to come out and have some fun with us. And it's, it goes like all day. This is such a huge community event. It is huge. Last year we had 77 teams. Wow. Yes, it, and it's wonderful because it is so much fun. Uh, the youngest kids get off at eight o'clock. That's when we start our games. And then it's the adult brackets towards the end of the day. And depending on how that goes, we can be here till six, 6.30, sometimes seven. All in good fun, but uh, also very serious fun too. Well, some... for the adults in particular, yes, <laughs> yes, but it is. I mean, for us, our focus is on building community in a healthy, happy way and, and just having a good time for a good cause. So building community, talk about what Crispin's House does. I know a lot of people obviously know what you guys do. You've been around in Gosstown for, for quite a while, but talk about the mission of what Crispin's House is all about. So Crispin's House is your local nonprofit that advocates for children and families. Um, our mission is to encourage and empower positive choices in the lives of our young people while helping to create a healthy and positive community. Um, so the way we do that, uh, we run a variety of different programs. One is our juvenile court diversion program. That's for your first time juvenile offenders. It's an alternative to court and hopefully sure. keeping them out of the court system. Because, you know, everybody, you know, when I was younger, I was, I was such an angel. Absolutely. I'm sure you were. <laughs> I never made any mistakes. <laughs> I, uh, you know. <laughs> it happens. It happens. As young people, we make mistakes. Yep. Um, and not everybody gets to come through juvenile diversion. Um, it, it's your golden ticket if you are given the opportunity to come through juvenile diversion. But we do work hard in you know, helping a young person who's taken a little bit of a wrong path, made a mistake, and getting yep. them right back. And that does, then that happens. You it know. does, it does, and it's very rewarding, and we're so glad to be able to do it. And I know you have groups that come into the high school too, or you'll, you'll talk with uh, some of the students and, and also volunteers. I mean, there's so much that you guys do. We do. One of our signature programs is Youth Forum. Uh, that is in its 23rd year here at Goffstown High School, wow. second year at Mountain View Middle School, which I'm really proud about. That's great. Doing great, great work with those kids. And, and essentially, it is um, adults who work with youth 
and youth getting together regularly around a table to talk about topics that are important to them. Um, if they have concerns, if they're looking for support, it's, it's great for those of us working with youth because we can identify gaps and needs and then work together to meet them. Yes. And it's good for the young people to know that they have support, understand who their resources are, and from a peer-to-peer -peer perspective, empower them to positively impact their peers. Well, it's great to have a dialogue because I think a lot of uh, um, nonprofits can kind of get into that uh, mentality of just the office. So yes. when you're dealing with you know teens especially, mm -hmm. it's an ever-changing world. So I, I'm sure it's a lot to keep up with. It is, and I think it's to Goffstown's credit because it is unique to us. Um, but as you know, with the opiate epidemic, yeah. we've been going to a lot of summits. And what I'm hearing from a lot of different communities is they're trying to create their own youth forums now. They don't know their youth forums. They're trying to get all their professionals together. We've got that. We've got the relationships. We've got the dialogue. Um, and we should be proud of it. We have a structure here that's already existed before there was the opioid crisis. Absolutely. That's phenomenal. And all of the, the proceeds from this three-on-three -three tournament all yes. go to help all this. So. Yes. As, um, as many of you know, Crispin's House depends upon the support um, of the community and different fundraisers and grants, uh, the warrant article, and all of this support comes together to, to help us provide these programs for our community and for our kids. So if I have you know, two buddies, we want to get a team together, how do we do that? Do it. So our um, registration information is on our website. We also have forms at the Goffstown Public Library and all of our area schools as well. But you can download them right off our website, www.crispinshouse.org. Uh, you can pay online using PayPal. Right. Um, or you can send in a check. Mm -hmm. And just, we will need the original of your registration. Uh, so you can bring that to the tournament. You can email it to us and or pop it in the mail. And I can't dunk. It doesn't matter, though. Right? It's okay. That surprises it's okay. you, I'm sure. I, I am amazed. I am. <laughs> I, I, I find That's it not, hard yeah. to believe. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think with this physique, I would be able to just, you know. I had you as a shoe in But no, seriously, um, everyone is welcome. We want to see you. We've got the smoke wagon coming down uh, to cook up some good barbecue Great. for us. So there will be no rumblies in the tumblies. <laughs> and... Um, um, and hopefully we'll just all have a great time. Well, it sounds great. I, I, I'm looking forward to you guys having another fantastic year with this and yes. uh, continuing with the great work that Crispin's House does. Excellent. Thank so, you so much. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. And we'll have uh, a little look at some of our volunteers for sports this year in just a little bit on Goffstown This Week. <laughs> Here's three things from this week's meetings on Channel 22. At Monday's selectman meeting, the only government meeting this week, the agenda on Monday focused on planned and proposed infrastructure improvements in different parts of town. The town's Department of Public Works director and the town engineer provided selectmen with an update on the Main Street project. This project will include the reconstruction of Main Street and North Mass Street from Mountain Road to Westlawn Cemetery in the village area. The project is intended to improve safety, increase the parking network, help make the village a destination spot, and increase opportunities for dining and shopping. During a separate discussion during the meeting, Selectman heard from two transportation officials about a potential connector road to I-293 as part of the state's project to make improvements at Exit 6 and 7. It is possible that most of the funding could come from the federal government with 20% of the cost to be paid by the local community. Selectmen are awaiting more information. 
And also during the meeting, the selectmen announced the hiring of Adam Jacobs, the current town's DPW director, as the new town administrator. The Goffstown Board of Selectmen announces the promotion of Public Works Director Adam Jacobs to fill the vacancy of town administrator effective April 1, 2017. The Board of Selectmen also announces the promotion of town engineer Megan Terrell to Public Works Director effective April 1, 2017. Megan was hired as a Glasstown Town Engineer in 2004 after working six years as an engineer in a private sector. Megan holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Civil Engineering and a Professional Engineering License. And that's three things from this week's meetings. For complete meetings, please catch the replays on Channel 22, or you can view, save, and even download meetings on our on-demand page. Hello and welcome. This is Brad Parkers with Seniors Count. Today's segment is going to be dealing with OSHA Lifelong Learning Institute at the Granite State College. We are located in Concord. Sitting with me today is the director, Jane Fletcher, and one of the volunteers, Bob Jones. This is a program that I have not heard about that would be very, very beneficial to seniors to learn about. So I'm going to let Jane and Bob explain what OLLI, that's the acronym, is all about. Thank you, Brad. OLLI is a Learning for the Fun of It program for people 50 years and older. We have about 400 classes that we offer a year, and there are no prerequisites. You don't have to have gone to college. You don't even need to have a degree or any of that stuff. It really is classes that have no homework attached to them and that might be something that's of interest to you that you hadn't studied when you were in, back in school. Um, it is an, OLLI is an acronym for the OSHA Lifelong Learning Institute. There are actually 120 of these nationwide at other colleges and universities that are all founded by the Bernard Osher Foundation and partially supported by the Bernard Osher Foundation. There's only one other in New Hampshire and that's up at Dartmouth. Classes are held at Granite State College and Granite State College is actually part of the university system of New Hampshire. We have classes that we offer here in Concord. We have classes in Manchester, Rochester, Portsmouth, and even in Conway. It's a member organization, so if you become a member of OLLI, you can take classes anywhere you'd like to take classes. We offer about 400 a year. We also have field trips. Classes aren't just at the college and on campuses. Bob can tell you a little bit about some of the field trips that are actually offered in the greater Manchester area. Mm -hmm. I should mention we also have just started doing classes in Nashua. Yes. So the people that live closer to Nashua also have access down there. Um, very often we'll, we'll take classes that are offered in one of these locations and in the next semester we may offer them in other locations. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty fluid class base and we try to offer the classes people want to take. Field trips, also okay. known as out and abouts. What kind yeah. of those do we have out okay. here? Well, the one I'm probably most familiar with, um, I do a hiking class uh, in woods near the Manchester area. So we hike at the Massabesic Center, we hike at Joe English down in Amherst, um, Tower Hill. We try to go somewhere different each week. And it, that's right now happening both in the fall and the spring. And we also try to do it as snowshoeing in the winter, but we haven't been successful getting the snow <laughs> when we've had the classes. We have it now. <laughs> um, we also do a tour of the uh, New Boston Air Force Station. That's right. Um, that we've been doing that for a number of years. I think we're one of two organizations in New Hampshire that are allowed access to the base. One, the other one is a Boy Scout troop in Nashua. So that's a very popular course, a very interesting facility. Mm -hmm. um, Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. The Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, we have tours. We go to Appledore Island, mm -hmm. um, which is a, you know, basically a, a University of New Hampshire research facility for the sea. Uh, this term, we're, we're going to actually tour the UNH uh, Science Research Center. Mm -hmm. So we'll be seeing their ice core ex exhibitions and a number of other things that the UNH is doing. 
interesting. So, so basically, volunteers search out local attractions that you may have always wondered about, but never actually went to, and to uh, and arrange for classes to be held there, so that groups, membership groups, can go and visit these classes, of uh, these facilities. You can take tours, and we consider them classes, and you register for them like anything else. Uh, a couple of summer things come to mind as well: kayaking on the Kentuckook River. Um, and uh, other boating excursions that we've had. Um, other than that, classes that we offer, Bob? Yeah. Um, just as, as a beginning, all of our presenters yes. are volunteers as well. So people presenting are presenting because they love to teach the subject. They're not getting paid for it. So well, Bob is one of them. <laughs> one of them. We have uh, quite a few people who are retired from St. Anselm's. We have quite a few people who are professionals who are either teaching their subject matter or just something they love to do. You know, we've had people teaching woodworking. We've had people teaching astronomy. We have a retired math person now who's teaching math and making it fun. <laughs> um, we, we did a kayaking as well on Massabesic. We're, we're getting into partnerships with a number of local organizations. Uh, the Audubon Center is one that we uh, are developing a very strong relationship with. Uh, we're doing a course on dragonflies and damselflies mm -hmm. in the upcoming term. So, and one with the uh, the birds. Uh, when the birds return in May, we have someone who leads a walk and you know, teaches this, the songs and about the birds that are happened that are visiting New Hampshire just for short periods of time. History classes are very popular. Um, we have, we do have some science classes as well. Um, crafts. Um, Conway is famous for their crafts classes, so this term they're doing one on decorating Ukrainian eggs. No, that's not right. Ukrainian <laughs> egg decorating. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> they're local eggs. So. Uh, bridge and Mahjong classes are also very popular. Literature classes <laughs> where, um, where members might all read the same book and then discuss it. And some of those turn into book clubs afterwards. There's just no end to the possibilities. Um, cr uh, cross country skiing, um, port, uh, uh, Seacoast volunteers are famous for their cross country skiing. Bob has tried, attempted a few of those around Manchester as well. Snowshoeing, <coughs> film classes, very popular. Uh, and Bob has done a few of those too. Mu some of, we have presenters who are um, very interested in, in showing musicals. We have others that are very interested in um, having classes where you actually see westerns or dark humor classes and discuss those kinds of things. Bob, some of your favorite film yeah, classes? I, I tend to do in? foreign films and I, I start with a silent film and work up to something that's recent. So we, we kind of cover a, almost a century of filmmaking you know, in the class with different representative uh, styles of filmmaking and, and topics. We have someone else who's a trained psychiatrist who does a film course on madness in the movies. Mm -hmm. So he actually shows movies that have characters who are a little unstable, and he, he gives a, you know, a discussion of the characteristics of the diseases and, and of, of the filmmaking process. So, and then, of course, we have the ones that seniors might be interested in that just really are relevant to that stage of life. So some of them are health related, some of them might be related to continuing care opportunities, some of them might be related to packing up and moving. What do I do with all this stuff? I'm going to downsize now. Right. So we always have people that are available, presenters that are interested in doing those classes and they also can be very popular. Because right, one class, sex after 60. Don't look at me, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> qualified. <laughs> We, we did say no homework, but a lot of the book class, obviously, there's homework. Uh, we're, off, we're offering a course that uh, is reading Machiavelli's The Prince and Shakespeare's Richard III, both very diabolical characters. <laughs> Richard III is probably the, the least liked of the English Blessing. kings. So this is going to be comparing what Machiavelli said about how to run a state and how Richard III carried that through. So it's, this is taught by... Uh, Benedictine from St. Aids. So it's a very, we also have another course on reading the Greek tragedies. Um, 
there's, I think, a Faulkner course. So we, we have a whole series of literature courses in which you get a chance to read the books you know, before and during the class periods and talk to other people. A lot of these are books that may be on your list of things you haven't read and finally decided it's time. That's right, that's right. So we offer about, um, we offer about, let me see, I'm trying to think, two hundred. I think there's about 500 classes a year that we offer. And we offer them at four different times of the year so that there's a change in the selection four times a year. We call those terms. And so what we're talking about now are some of the classes that we're offering this spring, which means that they start pretty soon, two weeks, and they'll go right through till the beginning of June. And then there'll be another selection that's presented to people, for a short, shorter selection that's offered to people for the summer. Um, and, and again, at each of those uh, sites that I mentioned before, Concord or in and around the greater Concord area, the greater Manchester area, Portsmouth, Rochester, or Conway. The fall is our biggest term, so those classes will start around September and they'll go right through till December and then we start all over again. Oh, in the winter, there's a short term in the winter as well. So there's a different selection four times a year, which I think also keeps it very interesting for people. Um, the, for our spring and our fall terms, we, we have events called uh, called previews. And so we invite the community, whether you remember or not, to come to different facilities, different venues that we put in the paper, and we generally let people know that way. And we, um, we let them know that the presenters of the classes that will be offered in this term will be there to talk about their class. They have about two minutes to sell their class. <laughs> and it makes all the difference for people. They'll have their catalog in hand, and it helps them make decisions about what, what to select and what not to select. So it's pretty interesting. I got a couple of questions yeah, here that came to mind. One is, uh, is there membership in this? or? Yes. yes. So and if there's a cost, or, and then what are the benefits going to go with that? <clears throat> Great questions, Brad. So um, there, this is a membership organization, as I mentioned earlier, and so the cost of a membership for Ali at Granite State College is $40 a year. So for $40 a year, what you're entitled to is to be able to register for classes at a discount of $20 per class. You're also, um, you're also affiliated with a group of volunteers who are the actual leadership in a specific campus area. So you might be affiliated with Concord. If you're a Gulfstown resident, you can, you can choose whether you'd like to be affiliated with Manchester or Concord, which doesn't restrict you to those classes, but opens up the opportunity to attend social events. So you'll get special invitations from whatever group you're affiliated with to come and have coffee and discuss a book come to a holiday party, to um, engage in a, a, a Cinco de Mayo in Manchester, for instance, nice. um, and different, they have a, a, a really a good variety of social events that the, that the volunteers offer. Part of what we, part of the mission of Ali is really, um, it's learning for the fun of it, but it's also to engage people socially. Um, so the $40 gets you a discount in your classes, it gets you uh, affiliated with a membership or uh, with, a, uh, with a local group, and um, you're, you're invited to social events along the way too. Okay, let me amplify yeah, on please. it. please. Because we set a discount on the classes. The classes are also pretty inexpensive. Yes. Basically, there's an overhead of $10 to take a class, and then about $5 per it, week. That would be 50. Okay. Well, it's uh, 10 plus session. 5. Mm -hmm. Single session. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing we didn't mention when we talk about classes, our typical class runs once a week at the same date and time, and we find this is a lot more conducive to senior schedules because most of us tend to be very heavily involved in other organizations. It's very difficult to take a class Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or every day of the week at a certain time because of other commitments. So by going through this, you can juggle your commitment schedule already and say, oh, I'm free Tuesdays. Here are a whole bunch of Tuesday classes I can take. Or I'm free Thursday afternoons or Saturday mornings. We're, um, we're slowly expanding. It used to be always nine to five classes. And that kind of fits with our Granite State College tie because their classes are in the evening. 
so we have the free, basically we have open classrooms during the day and it's much easier to schedule. But um, see that, didn't mean to interrupt No, you. go ahead. Uh, such a wealth of information here, but I see you have a catalog, mm -hmm. but also are there other ways that people can uh, either reach out a phone number or an address? Uh, I know there's a couple of websites, I mean you can mention them, you don't, we're not going to, you know, if you repeat them, that's fine. No, we'll run, but we'll be able to run them on our uh, on the screen so that people that's, can see them. But if you might want to talk about that, just quick. Sure. Probably the best place is the website. If you're familiar with the web, it's, it's Ali at Granite State College. It's Ali dot Granite dot Granite dot edu. Right. Pretty simple. Pretty yeah. Simple. Pretty simple. And when you get there, you'll be able to see the courses that are being offered now, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to see a lot of other information. You'll there. Are, there's a video of interviews with various volunteers and, and to people that take classes so you can get kind of a more personal view of what's happening. If they wanted to get a catalog and didn't have it, is there a phone number they can call to, uh, to sure. report the catalog? Sure. That's the Ali office phone number, which is 513-1377. That's here in Concord. Many of our volunteers have distributed these catalogs throughout the state as well, so you might be able to pick one up at your local library. Oh. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And at um, other places like doctor's offices, dentist's okay. offices. Yeah, we distribute quite a few throughout the community. Charles Schwab has one in there. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a wealth of information that you've given out here. Uh, as I said, I was unfamiliar with the uh, with the program, so I'm probably going to do a little more research. I like you to do a lot of volunteering. Um, I think what we'd like to do is maybe schedule a longer time to talk about what the whole program, you might have a couple of other people who want to get involved. Yep. But for right now, I'd like to thank you, Jane, and you, Bob, for allowing us to interview you and get this idea so that we can get it out to uh, the seniors in Goffstown. Again, thank you very much. Our okay. pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.